version of the third Indiana Jones film. So that was a big, big step for me as a writer, and I agreed to do it. And he said, well, why don't you come? He goes, I'm going to be in New York, uh, and George Lucas is going to be in New York at the same time, so why don't you come and meet with us, and we'll meet every day and talk about the story, and then we'll, you can go off and write the screenplay. So I thought, well, what a terrific idea. And I got to this hotel, and I walk in, and Steven Spielberg is there. And I had known Steven pretty well, but I was still very intimidated by him. And George Lucas is there, who I'd never met, who I was extremely intimidated by. So I'm sitting there in this room with two of my cinematic heroes, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, who started talking about this idea for this Indiana Jones film. So I took, you know, I basically worked as a secretary for five days. We sat in this hotel room for five days, and I wrote down everything they said, pieces of dialogue, action, and George basically dictated the entire screenplay. So I went home, and I thought, I was frozen with fear. I thought, I cannot change a word of this. I have to write exactly what they said. So I ignored everything I had learned in film school, everything every great teacher had ever taught me. I basically sat there and, and, and worked as a, as a secretary. I, I wrote down exactly what George and Stephen had dictated and turned in a script that was completely lifeless and without energy and without anything of myself, which I assume now, you know, years later, I assume that's why they hired me, because they wanted me to bring something of myself, and I was petrified. So I handed the script in, and I was fired. And it was really a defining moment for me, because I realized I will never do another project where I, where I ignore my basic sort of intentions and instincts about this picture. It's a great example for 